hi in this video i'm going to walk you through this credit card fraud detection machine learning task executed in fabric notebook let's get started the first thing i did was to come to this fabric notebook workspace and i created this credit card fraud leak house now in the leak house i proceeded to upload a file this credit card.csv file by clicking on this horizontal ellipses and then I choose this upload and I uploaded the files. So I can even click on the credit card.csv and investigate the contents. So this is the content. And next I click on these files and then we can see this inconspicuous horizontal ellipsis. So click on it. This allows me to rename, delete, or see the properties of the file. And of course, you can even load to a new or an existing table. So I load it to a new table. And of course, I give this meaningful name next i click on this open notebook and then i choose this new notebook and that led us to this page so we can see the data so let's go through the code in a few minutes now the first thing i did was to import the necessary libraries the pandas seaborn matplotlib dot pyplot and of course I read the data and preview the data which is coming from the azure data lake storage so this is the df equal to pd.read underscore parquet inside open and close bracket and double quotation i pasted the data path how do i get all this path just come to this data click on this horizontal ellipsis and copy the path and just paste inside double quotes just like i have done let me just scroll to the right there we go and of course just display the first three records in the data frame and when i scroll down we can see the data frame okay now basically we have so many columns but let me just talk about the last column the class now we're trying to predict fraudulent and non-fraudulent credit card transactions so we have class zeros and ones now the one simply represents fraudulent transactions and the zero simply represents non-fraudulent transaction so let's move on and in this cell I access the class column from the data frame and then we use the dot value underscore count to count so we can see the results for the non fraudulent transaction we have 568,630 and then for the fraudulent we have 984 records or transactions okay so this is one and zeros and in the next cell I use the dot df dot histogram to just visualize the data sets so i specify the beans and then the fixed size and in the next cell i use the describe period to see the descriptive analysis of the data so we can see the count the main standard division minimum max and so on let's move on to the next cell so in this next cell we use the robust scalar which is from the sklearn from sklearn import preprocessing from sklearn dot preprocessing import robust scalar so i just created a new variable df underscore new and i copied the content of the previous variable and then we can see this df underscore new and of course we access the amount column now this is the column in the data frame in which the scales we are trying to apply will be assigned to and then we have this robust scalar that fit underscore transform and so on now this is where the scaling occurs okay and of course this to underscore numpy is basically allowing us to convert the data into a numpy array and then we have this reshape, reshape. and of course we just visualize the result of the amount column using the east function so let's go to the next cell in the next cell we also use the describe method to see the descriptive analysis of the amount column and let's move on and of course in this case just to make sure that our data is suitable for machine learning modeling task i apply this time normalization to the data and let's go on okay so then we come to the partitioning of the data into training testing and validation sets so we have train test and validation and then we assign 230,000 to the training and then we assign these values to the testing and then for the validation we assign this value and then we analyze the number of instances for each class in the training testing and validation set so we have the print 
train and then we access the class column dot value underscore count and then we do the same thing for the testing and then for the validation and then we examine the shape of the testing the training testing and the validation set so we have the train dot shape test dot shape and the val dot shape so we can see the output here so let's move on next we come to this cell now basically what this is doing train dot to numpy test dot to numpy and val to numpy is basically converting the data in a three pandas data frame for the train test val into numpy arrays and assigning them to the three variables that we define train underscore np test underscore np and val underscore np next code basically is selecting all the columns of the numpy array from the train underscore np and so on the set the last column so that's why we have this minus one because the last column is the target column so this is basically extracting the you know, features and then we also examine the dimensions of the input and output arrays the x train dot shape y train dot shape x test and so on and so forth and then we come to the modeling part now the first thing i did is to import the logistic regression model so from sklearn.linear underscore model import logistic regression and then i initialize the instance of the logistic model and i fit these are the x train the y train and then we evaluated the model performance so i'm going to scroll down and this results into 0 0.99 and then we move to importing the classification report function, which is the from sklearn.metrics import classification report. And then we generated the report. Now we can see this y val. This is the actual labels of the validation set. And of course, we can see this logistic underscore model.predicts. This is basically the predicted labels generated by the logistic regression model on the validation set, which is the x val. And then I specify this target name. This is to make it more meaningful. So we have um, the non-fraudulent and then for the fraudulent deals. So when I scroll down, we can see the classification report. We can see the precision, the recall, and the F1. If we can see the output for the non-fraudulent and for the fraudulent deals. So basically, some of you know that the F1 score is the harmonic mean of the precision and the recall. So let's move to the next model because of time. So we want to focus on the random forest classifier. So we also initialize the instance of the random forest and then we specify the maximum depth equals to two and the end jobs equals to one. And then we also feed the training, the X train and the Y train. And then we also generated a classification report. And then when I scroll down, so we can see the precision, the recall, F1 score. And then we can see how everything looks like for the non-fraudulent and for the fraudulent deals. And then I proceeded to the gradient boosting classifier again. We also imported the necessary model. And of course, this is a variable. And then we initialize the instance of the gradient boosting classifier. And for the end estimator, we set that to 50 for the learning rate, 1.0, max depth, 1, and the random state equals to 0. And then we fit the model training data and then generated the classification report and let's move on so this is the result anyway the output let's move on to the next one also we use the linear svc again we initialize the fit the training data classification report and let's move on to the next model so the multi-layer perception so again we imported the necessary model and then we initialize the instance of the m lp classifier and then we specify the maximum iteration to 500 and then we fit the training data and then we have the classification report and there we go we have the result for the precision recall and the f1 score and finally we have the decision tree classifier and when you scroll down we have the result here okay now as a business, you can try to choose looking at the F1 score of each of the models and maybe you want to focus on the precision or you want to focus on the recall. It's up to you to determine which of the model 
is best suited to your task. So this is basically all that I've done in this credit card fraud detection machine learning task. Before I bring this video to a close, I want to show you something that is a little bit striking. So now basically as we execute each of the models, this actually generates what's called a run list. So you can see things like the pop B when I scroll down. Uh, we have something called sincere B. When I scroll down to the next model, we can see lucid flaw and so on and so forth. I mean, this is quite a neat experience, but let's just see what all this implies. And of course, before I do that, we can see the time, the start time, the duration, the status, and the experiment, experiment name. So when I click on one of them, this actually opens or creates what's called experiment experience in the machine learning data science in Fabric which is quite amazing. So we can see all these units. So you can click on one of them and see how you know, they look like. So we can see the properties, the description, the run name, the name of the creator, the start date, duration, and so on and so forth. And this is quite an you know, amazing experience in Fabric Data Science. So this is basically how I created this machine learning task in Fabric. Now, we can also take it further by using neural network to undo data imbalance, but I'm not going to cover that in this video, but I just want to show you a little bit of machine learning modeling in Fabric. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.